We are live. Welcome, everyone. I'm Tony Barbarino, and these two professional, beautiful people next to me are uh, Sven and Kim. And today we're talking about a interesting subject, which is about divorce during COVID specifically. Because it's been a rough year for a lot of people. Some of us, you know, got lucky, but sometimes, you know, things happen. So, by all means, I want my friends here to introduce themselves to you guys and if you have any questions out there on the social media throw those comments with those questions and we'll pull them up live on the air and try to help you out along the way so don't be shy and do like share and subscribe this show because you never know who else you're going to help so i'm tony Barbarino with remax and i want my friends to introduce themselves each of you take it away and tell the public who you are well tony thank you so much for having me i'm sven buncher of the buncher law corporation I've been an attorney for 22 years. I'm certified by the State Bar of California as a specialist in family law, which means we had to pass a rigorous exam and meet certain experience requirements, trials, and so forth. And Kim? Hi, everybody. My name is Kim Danatel from Pradium Trust Services, and I am an estate planning representative I represent a law firm, Citadel Law, who is a probate and estate planning firm who's done over 50,000 trusts and has a, represented multiple countless people through the process of probate. And we'll be talking about why when going through divorce, you most likely need to have your estate plan looked at and updated. Okay, Tony. Ah, oh, fantastic. All right, guys. So. Again, uh, I'm Tony Barbarino. I'm just here as a host to moderate. Uh, but we have two very valuable people here, and we know uh, it's, it's not a happy subject, but the benefit of having people like Sven and Kim involved is hopefully it'll make things better and as level and fair as possible so you all can have a, a good outcome. So, Sven, uh, why don't you kick it off? Why don't you go ahead and start right out with uh, about COVID and uh, its effect on the uh, divorces, you know, particularly with COVID, you know, the situation and whatever nuggets you want to start sharing with us, by all means, please take it away. Absolutely. So good news is things are starting to come around quite a bit. Um, through March, March through July, um, there frankly was a bit of anarchy going on. The courts were pretty much shut down, operating on a skeleton crew. And you could file documents, but the court was not receiving them. And um, crazy things were happening. Um, the courts were not hearing anything unless basically a child, not an adult, but pretty much a child was physically at imminent risk of abuse or harm. So crazy things were going on. Spouses were like towing each other's cars, selling businesses, emptying accounts, doing all sorts of things. And it was pretty scary times because someone that was playing by the rules couldn't go in and, and get relief. The good news is now, the courts pretty much in Southern California are all open. Um, they're doing mostly virtual hearings. So we're using devices such as this to, uh, to do our hearings with the court. Um, depends on the judges, but they're catching up uh, pretty good on the backlog on cases. And we're now able to go into court and present uh, cases and get a relief uh, virtually. And another good news about that, and part of this I hope never changes, is it's allowing people to save a great deal of money because now, mm is sitting around in court and waiting to be called for maybe an hour, uh, we just have our video running. And when it's our turn to talk, then we come in and we talk and then we're done. So it saves the clients quite a bit of money. And since you know courts are public services, I'm hopeful that they will keep part of this in place. And if there is a good cause, the court can make an exception, actually bring people into court in person. So in Orange County, San Diego, Los Angeles, Riverside, all hearing video, uh, hearings and uh, San Bernardino is doing them in person actually right now. So that's where we are now. Things can change um, on a weekly basis, but this is where we are right now. So courts are open and back in action. Wow. It sounds like there's a, a lot of inner workings, uh, you know, going on in the court system. It's already bad enough that, you know, it's stereotypical that courts take forever doing things. And it's fair to say that because of COVID and if you're getting a divorce, taking longer it probably makes things a little more painful in some cases and people can get pretty heated you know and let alone let alone having a potential health issue come upon you that's just more icing on the cake i mean my heart goes out to people out there that you know are having this issue sometimes these things do happen and that's why i'm glad that we have lawyers like yourself that 
you know, you truly, you truly understand the people and you're trying to be that good person to make it smooth as possible for both sides. And it's unfortunate these things happen, but that's why we have you here to give people some of that insight. Cause I know, um, before I spoke to you, you know, I never crossed my mind, but now hearing you say certain things before we had spoken, it really enlightened me to some degree of, oh man, this, this gets pretty deep. And you know, I don't, I don't think it'd be wise for someone to go it alone. And that's why we have attorneys. Um, that being said, um, uh, in terms of the courts and divorce and COVID, um, there's clearly an effect on individuals, you know, cause you know, husband, wife, you know, they, they work, they come home, they have a home life, they have a, a work life. And unfortunately, a lot of times now we're spending even at least all this year, we spent a lot of time at home. So could you elaborate a little further on the effect COVID had on people and divorce and what are some things that they have to start being uh, start thinking about just some general loose advice at the time because obviously every person's situation is unique in some degree but what are some things that they have to at least start to entertain in their mind uh when they go talk to an attorney like yourself for example but what are some things they can start thinking about to start wrapping their heads around this if this is a path they're going to want to do sure and uh, you know i kind of hear uh, two issues coming from me first of all what's the effect on individuals mm. and secondly you know what are some tips people who are contemplating divorce should consider uh even perhaps before they even speak to an attorney correct so let's talk about the effect on individuals first um and so you know because of COVID, a lot of people are getting laid off and they're suffering from losses uh, of income whether it's a person again who's been laid off, have been put on a you know a, a limited work regime, or a self-employed person whose business is is suffering a decrease, mm -hmm. and so for people who are already divorced, um, that might mean they need to go in and they might get they might need to get their spouse support or child support orders modified to reflect the lower income, and it's really important that they get something filed right away because those orders are, are only retroactive to the day it's filed. So if you've just stopped paying your spouse less um, and you haven't filed anything, you're going to be subject to owing the money back the arrears plus 10% per annum. And it can compound uh, dramatically you know, over time in terms of how much you owe. So you really, uh, although it's 10% per annum, simple interest, it really has a big effect. So you really want to get something filed right away if you already have support orders and you're paying too much right now. Don't just simply stop paying less money. Technically, you're in violation of court order if you do that. Um, also, people have, their estates have gone down in value. Um, if you are end up being the spouse who runs the business and you're going to have to buy out the other spouse and pay them to equalize the community estate mm -hmm. and you're going to buy them out of that business, um, it's actually a good time to file right now because then your, your business will be worth less money and then you'll equalize it for that amount of money. And then when the business comes up, well, that's all gain that goes to you at that point in time. Um, another issue effect on individuals is that spouses are spending more time together. I would hope that in most cases, this would help repair relationships, but in many cases, it's, that's what's made it unbearable and people need to get a divorce and, and move along. Um, now to deal with the, the, the divorce uh, and with courts being backed up, there's a variety of options. Um, the best option is mediation. What's mediation? That's when both people come in and they use the same attorney. And the attorney tries to help them work together to resolve the case. And if they can't resolve the case, then they both have to get a brand new attorney to litigate the matter. So that's part of the deal. They're vested in trying to get that resolved. And this is not worth pursuing unless both parties can get past being a vindictive emotions and make rational business decisions. And I hate to use the word business decisions when it comes to children, but people have to make rational decisions in terms of co-parenting, support, and division of the state. And I see some people push with mediation when one spouse is not ready and you're really wasting your money because you're gonna end up back in front of the attorneys. So if you can't settle, mediation is still an option, but what happens then is each side gets their own attorney. And then the two attorneys then use a third party mediator. And why does that work when the two spouses don't get along? Because 
you still kind of get the feeling of getting your day in court, getting to vent, that there's an opportunity to present your side to the mediator and then have the mediator tell you what they think. And that often helps to get the parties to settle. Another option, and these are all great options, not just for COVID time, but uh, any time, is where the case can't settle to use a private judge. So each side retains their own attorney, but you have a private judge. Now, people say, well, how can that save me money? Because we're now paying a third person, a retired judge or an attorney to help resolve the case through litigation. And the answer is, is that the court systems, unfortunately, are underfunded and overburdened and inefficient. You might go to court with your attorney to put on a hearing and you'll have to wait 30, 90 days to get in there. And then when you get to court, the court might say, we don't have enough time for you today. Come back tomorrow. This can happen two or three times. And there's lots of other inefficiencies with the court system, but unfortunately the attorney has to charge you for their time. So the bills rack up. But if you get a private judge, you get a hearing when you want it, at a mutually convenient time, it all gets done in one day. And uh, so the private judges are much better at getting things done quickly. And so even though you have a third person on the payroll that are usually split by both sides, it ends up selling up a great deal of money. It's faster, less stressful and cost savings. And we and you both have to agree to it, right? Both Obviously both parties have to agree on that judge to use that one. That is a really good question. Both parties have to stipulate to using a private judge, but it's in everybody's best interest. And we can often advocate that once we get past, get them past the thought that, hey, is this gonna be more expensive? The answer is usually not. It's usually gonna be vastly less expensive. And then the third option, it's, it's, it's actually part of all three of those, is the do-it-yourself divorce. Some people feel, especially when it's more amicable, that maybe just with the assistance of someone to help them fill out all the complicated legal forms, or maybe with a cons uh, being able to consult with an attorney right now and then, you can do it yourself. And so our office actually offers a separate branch that helps that. It's called Green, Green Giraffe Forms Legal Services, and we do that. But in any case, when you're going through a divorce or after a divorce, and especially with COVID, more now than ever, you need to be prepared in the event that you die, your spouse dies, before your divorce yes. is over. And so I would ask you, Kim, with your background in estate planning, um, what are your thoughts in that regard? Uh, thank you, Sven. And uh, actually, uh, this, what I'm about to say, applies not only to those who are going through divorce right now, but there are a lot of couples who have decided, a lot of marriages have decided to separate, but they stayed married, but they're in other relationships. And uh, what happens when you're legally married and you're going through a divorce, and if one of you either dies or becomes incapacitated and either you did not have an estate plan or you had an estate plan with a trust, if you've not taken proper um, uh, steps to uh, solidify and secure your own assets, then everything that you would have been entitled to is going to go to your legally married spouse. Now, let me preface this. I am not, unlike Sven, I am not an attorney. I'm not giving legal advice. I represent the law firm, but generally speaking, um, as you're going through a divorce, if you have an estate plan in place, the first thing you should consider doing is actually revoking your trust and or starting your own trust, but also filling out new wills, power of attorneys, healthcare directives, HIPAAs. If you are going through a divorce and if it's a, an adverse situation and you become incapacitated, your soon to be spouse who you perhaps cannot stand is now responsible for legally taking care of making financial decisions on your behalf. They are also responsible on taking, make, making your healthcare decisions, your financial decisions. And in the event that you were to pass away, the assets that you would have been titled to as a single um, divorced spouse, that perhaps you would wanna go only to your children or to your children and other family members, then those assets are gonna go legally to your soon to be ex. So as you're going through and making a, the difficult decision, or maybe it's an easy decision, I don't know, to divorce, uh, the other piece that you should really seriously consider is getting your estate plan either updated or revised. Uh, and also I say that for those of you who are still married, uh, but yet in other relationships, uh, again, those situations are your legally married spouse is who controls everything and who's going to get the stuff. So, 
Well, I got, I got a uh, definitely what two as a real estate agent. <laughs> the, the two cents I can add to that is, folks, I know that uh, you know when you talk to people like Sven and Kim, there's going to be some valuable information there. Specifically, in, in my in, on my side of the fence, if you have property or homes to sell, it is great a great idea after you see your attorney to very seriously consider having paperwork put together for trust and wills because if you go to want to sell that house one of the first things i'm going to ask you is well who's the authority figure uh, who are the people that are authorized to be able to sell this house and we're going to pull title we're going to see who owns it if you're both on it i need to get both of you I need to get both of you to agree to sell this house. And I have to deal with a lot of flack on that end where people are going to disagree with each other as to what they want to sell it for, when do they want to sell it, what do they want to include. You might get 26 different offers and you hate all of them, but maybe the other person, you know, likes five of them. So it is in everyone's best interest, in my opinion, as just a common folk, <laughs> is see your lawyer. Seriously consider getting things in, you know, in the trust, having estate planning, because it makes it much easier for a real estate agent to help you be more successful should you be selling your real estate. Because without having people agreeing on things, without having things in writing, it's a train wreck on my end of paperwork. And one of the first things I'll come back to you guys out there, if you're selling, who's your attorney? Who has the right to sell this house? Uh-oh, what do you mean your husband's in the hospital because of COVID? Well, it's not my job to interfere with that, but I would have to do the morally, ethical, legal component of, I can't sell your house or I can't accept a signed listing agreement or we can't do a deal until I have documentation to show who has the ability to say yes or no to the deals, who has the, the right to sell that home and then when we have that figured out, then we have to deal with the whole, okay, here's the offers. Here's how we're going to sell it. Here's how we're going to market it. Uh, which offers do you like or not like? And it is a lot for me to juggle, and I'm perfectly fine with that. My job is to make things happy in terms of selling the home. And then, of course, sometimes, you know, the spouses, they have to go, they have to go buy something. So if you're, if you're going to use a real estate agent out there, whoever it's going to be, just make sure you got someone that can handle the stress, the grief, and stay focused and know to do the right thing and check in with that attorney like Sven to make sure that they know what you're doing with the client because it's a good idea to make sure the attorney knows what's up just in case something changes, just in case something happens with the courts, and that might affect my ability to move forward and sell your home or pause it for a certain reason. And there's so much to the legal aspects of it that if you have someone like Kim and Sven on your side, to me as an agent, it sounds like a solid plan. There could be more to it, but it's something you definitely want to consider. And I would think the first phone call should be to them too, is you know we need to set things up. And again, if you're getting a divorce and you're going to go through with it, like Kim said, if something happens to one of you, it, it could it's a shame, but it could stop a lot of things. It could cause a lot of problems. And getting things in writing is more helpful for me as an agent. So um, that being said, uh, let me throw it back to Sven about um, about things like, uh, was it the status dissolution? I think we had touched on. Let's talk a little bit about some tips if you're about to go through divorce and bring it back around. Ah, there you so, go right over to him and to you but I, I also want to touch upon it really quick a couple things Tony that you said and that Kim said first of all we talked about the option of a mediator well a lot of people need to sell their house during a divorce they can't wait for the six month one year process for that to wrap up to liquidate the house funds and maybe so people can buy their own places and, and get and get forward with that with two different households um, and so, you know, the, 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 media, the uh, real estate agent, like Tony, you need someone who can handle a high conflict situation and act as basis yes. mediator between the two parties. The real estate agent actually ends up working very closely with the attorneys um, because the, the real estate agent will recommend the optimal price to move that house within, you know, 60 or 90 days, as opposed to the price they want to get. The, the, the real estate agent will yep. recommend, uh, you know, what things to do the house for curb appeal, get this house to move. And then the attorneys will use that to 
uh, work with the party to get them to adopt the real estate agent's recommendations. So, you know, Tony's role cannot be understated in a house sale situation, which is often a very big centerpiece of any divorce in Southern California. Well said. Secondly, in terms of uh, Kim, uh, her, the point that she made is very important. So if you are going through a divorce and let's say um, that you pass away during the divorce, just sort of, you know, could be COVID, could just be a car accident. Mm -hmm. If you haven't talked to Kim and if you hadn't made proper arrangements with your, the divorce attorney, um, two things are gonna happen. First of all, the family court's gonna lose that case and it's gonna go over to probate case. So the concept about that all community property is divided equally and that your share gets to go to your heirs as opposed to going to the surviving spouse, that's not going to happen in all probability. So you need to work with a divorce attorney who knows how to sever the status of your marriage even before your divorce is over. That will keep your matter in the family court, even if someone passes away during the divorce. And then working with Kim, she'll make sure that your share of the estate goes the way it goes where you want it to, as opposed to the operation of def default law, which could mean that all goes to the person that you're divorcing. So bringing it back to around to where we started, though, we talked about what are some practical tips people can follow um, who are getting divorced. So should I talk a little bit about that, Tony, real quick? Yeah, um, yeah please do, because uh, like you said, just to quickly uh, um, echo back what you were saying, uh, in most cases, the, the home is probably the biggest investment. It is a lot of money. There's going to be egos involved. There's going to be charged emotions. And, you know, growing up in the uh, uh, New Jersey and working in New York City, uh, I have a really great coat of armor to deal with the grief. And I many times I am in that home and there are people that will be yelling at each other or arguing over things or one's going to ask me to tattletale on the other. It ain't going to happen. So people can be as uh, confrontational and conflicted as possible. I know that for me, I come in, I have a job to do. Get the best price possible for the home, you know, depending what the market can bear, and get it done. And to also you know, be very uh, clear, very moral in that we have to do things right so everything could be done and move on. And then, of course, you want to be able to possibly help them move on and buy something else if that need be. So... When I had divorce cases before, you know, I get them periodically. It's fine. And I, I know what that feels like in that environment. And I guess because of my upbringing and my experiences, you know, when you work in New York City, it's tough. And when you come out to California, it's, it just worked out to my advantage. But I also know what I don't know. So when it comes to, like, my buyers, every buyer, I do suggest lightly, you should consider having a trust and estate planning. It doesn't matter how much money you have. At least have it once just so you have it in place. And if you're going to get divorced or you know that's coming, you might want to update that because there are eggs involved. There are. That's why people get divorced. Yeah. Tony, let me go ahead and speak a little bit to that. A lot of sure. people have this misunderstanding that, well, I'm too young for an estate plan. I don't need a trust or maybe I don't have enough money. Uh, here in the state of California, if you own a property and that property is worth $55,000 or more, and you pass away and that property goes to somebody other than a spouse, that property will go through probate. Or if you have uh, assets worth $166,000 or more, that also is a trigger for probate. So it's extremely important that uh, anybody out there who owns a property, whether you're divorcing, not divorcing, it's a rental, it's your primary, whatever it is, or even if you live here in California, but you own a property out of the state of California, if it's worth more than $55,000 and you want it to avoid probate, I highly recommend you speak with me or an estate planning attorney that you work with to get that property protected. So, and then that makes Tony's job a lot easier when it comes to selling the house. And it makes sense a little easier too, as he's talking about the assets. That's true. This is not a happy topic, obviously. And that's why we have people like Kim to help give you that guidance and who to talk to to get that estate and trust planning. Because th as I said a minute ago, things in writing are very, very, very helpful. And for my component is if you have property involved, whatever agent you use, obviously I hope it's me, but whoever you use, you really got to be picking somebody carefully and you hope they're going to say something, you know, maybe a few things like I said, 
who's your attorney? I have to introduce myself. I need to know who has the right to sell this property. By the way, where's your spouse? You know, he's on title. Uh, and if he's out of the country or he's sick or he just recently died or becomes incapacitated, there's going to be a lot to juggle. So be mindful, folks. Watch out for paper pushers where they just shuffle things. You're going to need a, a real estate agent whether it's me or whoever you trust, to really be paying attention and be conscientious and involved and knowing that they have to be engaged with the attorney so everybody knows exactly what's happening every day and getting think, getting your home ready to be sold. There's gonna, it makes it more intense for a real estate agent to have to deal with the divorce scenario and selling a property. And, and Yeah, and you know, Tony, also say for those who perhaps – are thinking about a divorce and don't know if, if they are going down that path, get in touch with an attorney for consultation and really find out where you stand. Like Sven? Like, well, of course, of course, Sven, he's awesome. And and plus, because of the different levels of service that they offer their clients, yeah, which, which yeah, call, call Sven, the, the wrong way, I'm pointing the wrong way. But um, get the information that you need, get your ducks in a row, so to speak, so that you can make a good decision. Um, Sven and his team are incredible at talking with clients. They've got different levels of service depending on how you feel you need to be represented. Yes. Um, and I don't know, Sven, if you want to speak to any of that. And then also some tips, which I think we were going to. Uh, yeah, getting ready for divorce and what he offers. Exactly. Yeah. Please, by all means, Sven, let, let him know. Let him know. I'll elaborate on that, please. Sure. Well, we've got a few minutes left, so let's let's give everybody you know five quick takeaways. Okay. Yes. Speaking of homes, um, you know you need to figure out, especially if a child, where are you going to where are you going to be living? Um, if you are in a contentious situation with your spouse, then it's probably a good idea to get the house sold during the divorce. In the meantime, you need to figure out where you're going to be living, and you need to have a place where it's suitable for your timeshare with your child. Okay. So that's, num that's number one. Um, number two, make sure before you file that petition for dissolution of marriage that you have some access to money. There's maybe a, a, a time period, a lag, to, especially if you're not the wage earner, between the time that you can see an attorney and get an order for support and how long you're going to have to survive on your own without money. So you want to think about you know, financial resources. Make sure that you're a co-signer on the family credit card and you have access to it. Because once you file for divorce, the other spouse is precluded from canceling that credit card. So now you've got some money. Maybe if you have a joint account, take a fraction of that money, not all of it, maybe half or a lesser fraction, and put it in a separate account just before you retain an attorney so that you're able to survive until you get a support order. Okay. Um, secondly, documentation. You're going to want to make try and gather information about family finances and any family business and assets. You can set that aside. That'll give you a head start later on. And if you have children, you want to make sure that you've kept a diary of your involvement with your children to show that you're an involved parent. And you want to know all the teachers, the primary care physicians, and their contact information so you can take care of your kids. And also later on, if it's been contested whether or not you're an involved parent, you can show, hey, I know who these people are. I have their information. Thirdly, prepare your emotion. excuse me, fourthly, prepare your emotional support group. So you're going to need people to draw on, not just your attorney. They are going to have to give you emotional support. So, you know, start preparing people and saying, hey, I'm about to go through this thing. Keep it, you know, quiet. But I'm going to need your emotional support. I'm going to need you to be there for me, okay? Lastly, have a consultation with an attorney. It doesn't mean you have to retain them. You want to basically get the big picture. You're, you're at orbit around the moon looking down at the earth. You want to get a, a big picture. You want to have a clear path. Where am I now? And where do I want to be? And generally, how do I get there? And what's the law to get me there? Now, our office offers a clear path consultation. So when you come in, we're going to assess exactly that. Where are you now? Where do you want to be? What are your realistic goals? And what are the steps you have to do to get there? And so when you walk out, there's no longer this mystery or question of what's going to happen to me. You now have a clear strategy and a plan. We get a lot done in just one hour. It's $350, but... You walk out with so much information that uh, it takes away the mystery. And whether you want to retain an attorney or not, you now know what your central central compass is and where you're going to go. Back to you, Tony. Wow. You know, it's I. my heart does go out to people that have the situation in a divorce, and especially with COVID, of course, which makes it worse. And, you know, I, 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 
I would feel so bad for children because nobody, nobody deliberately plans this. Like I'm going to get married just so I can go through that. And it does, it happens, you know, and, and it's unfortunate, but you know, thank goodness we have attorneys and I can only speak on my own opinion, my experiences with you. It's uh, it's really nice to know that there's an attorney like yourself that sounds like, and sounds like, and says all the things that sound like wisdom. It sounds like you care. It sounds like, you know, you're compassionate because typically TV makes you look like, yeah, we're going to get everything. We're going to smoke them in court. And, you know, people joke about that and they're probably out there. And I would just encourage anybody, if you're going to talk to an attorney, if you like them and you feel like they care, that's probably a, a, a good initial start. You got to see how Sven is. And, uh, He's even nicer. When you get a chance to talk to him privately, he's even a nicer guy. He's like, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, you are the oracle of knowledge on this topic. And, uh, and especially because you also care. So what a combination. Knows a lot, cares a lot. That sounds like a winner to me. Kim, you and I spoke many times. You've been on my show. I know you are gold. That's my opinion. Allegedly, you are gold. So if you folks out there, I do not care how much money you do or don't have. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to Kim and find out because I just dealt with some buyers. They're they're 30 years old and, you know, they make more than I do. And they know, yeah, we better do this because i rather see people have a, a trust and estate planning, at least have something and then maybe make a change one day in the future, but have something in place. Yeah. And if you guys are going to go through a divorce, because COVID does keep us wrapped up and tight and we spend a little too much time with our spouse. And sometimes there were things already there and COVID just made it worse. Sometimes people get better, but I would heavily suggest personally contact Sven, uh, contact his office, contact him. And when you guys out there work these things out and if you're gonna go through a process of selling, Call who you want. I mean, I hope some of you, you know, give me a call, message, text, email, whatever it takes. Thank you, Sven. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Kim, <laughs> sorry, Michelle. I I just had a message pop up from Michelle. She just said, great show. Great show. Great show. And I like the lawyer because he looks like an approachable guy. Okay. I you well, yeah, it just popped up on my phone because I guess lawyers are scary. I just see him on TV. Like you're he's he's very approachable. I just want to do one more one more plug for Sven. One of the things that one of the things that impressed me about when I first met him a while ago, uh, he said something uh really that resonated. Uh, he said that there's a lot of attorneys that, you know, that, that, well, not he said it, but also it's there that a lot of attorneys on that consult, people think that we're going in for that free consult and we're going to get free legal advice on what to do. Hmm. Most of the time in a consultation with an attorney is for them to hear your case. They're deciding whether they want to work with you, whether it's worth their time. And they're really going to tell you what it is or why you should hire them. Okay. You don't get anything. Maybe you sales get pitch. Sales, sales pitch, pitch. Sales pitch. Yeah. That's not what you're getting with Sven. So if you do do the consultation with him, they can tell you which, you know, you're gonna walk away with uh, knowing where you stand and with some clear direction with his clear path. Um, and uh, I love the fact that he's not just talking about the divorce, but he's also thinking about the estate plan, how to protect his clients. And he's also thinking about real estate and how he can help his clients, you know, encompass their biggest asset and how to properly take care of that with the kids. So don't don't assume you know everything, folks, because back in my uh, undergrad medical school days a million years ago, uh, the one of the doctors giving a lecture, he says, somebody gets shot in the chest. What do you do? And somebody said, take the bullet out. And then he went on three hours to talk about the process of taking that bullet out. So a lot of us think just take the bullet out. Well, no, you need to get in touch with people that know the, uh, the intimacies of the law and all the considerations that uh, people probably don't have the calm mind and the wits to be aware of. It isn't, I want a divorce. It's, I want a divorce, and here's 375,000 things to know. You could try to do it yourself or go to a, legitim a legitimate attorney who cares, like Sven. We can't, Kim and I can't uh, sing high enough for praises. And of course, yeah, we're all on the show together, but I have these two guests on because I trust them, in my opinion, I trust them, and I hope that by listening to them, maybe you feel like they're people you should contact. Um, I'm so sorry if you guys out there, if you're going to go through a divorce, I mean, I am, I'm so sorry, I mean, I wish it worked out, 
but if it's not going to work out, it's going to end. I have two people right here <laughs> that care. So it's a business and it's your business of divorce. Get it done as right and as fair as possible and, you know, move on with your lives. And then we can go buy new homes. <laughs> she can buy one. He can buy one. See, it always comes back to real estate somehow. Anyway, uh, Sven, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Tom. Thank you. Thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, don't send me an invoice. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I'm just kidding folks. No, no, it's, he's, he's really, he's gracious with his time and uh, I'm humbled and thankful you're here. You know, having an attorney on is like, wow. I mean, you know, I'm just a real estate agent. I think I'm just below, we're just one step above the IRS agents. <laughs> so real estate agents are next. And I think above us are like uh, car salesmen. So I'm just joking. It can't, you know, thank, time, we, what? At the end of the day, when I go home from work, the clients that are that are really in distress, I pick up the phone. They get a call from me, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. But they like that call because whatever is irking them, they can talk to me about it, and there's no charge. Ah, see, folks, there are some lawyers that are nice people who care. So, Because I care about what I do. I know Kim does too. So, Kim, thank you for being here. And folks out there, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I, I would encourage a dialogue with Sven and Kim, should you happen to be in the situation, especially because of COVID, that makes it worse. These two champions are here to help combat all those issues and see if they can help you guys out and do what they can to help get your life back to where you wanted to. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm Tony Barbarino. I'm a Remax agent here in Irvine. Thank you for watching the podcast and we'll see you again on the show. And if you want my guests to come back and have topic ideas, let me know so I can give you guys what you want, free information. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you, Sven. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, audience.